So we've gone through this the manual way using a stock Ender 3. So what happens if you have an upgraded firmware like Marlin or in my case, the TH3D version of Marlin? Well, we're gonna show you. I use Octoprint, but this could be used with Repetier Host or any other uh, software that allows you to access the printer through the G-code. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So like I said, in this video, I'm going to use Octoprint and show you the commands that we need to do to recalibrate your E-steps. Let's do it. All right, the first thing we want to do is get our current E-steps. So we're going to go ahead and click up here. Okay, maybe. There we go. And then type in M503. When that pops up, we're going to go ahead and scroll up until we see this line up here. And it should say E93, which our current E steps are E93. All right, so after we use the M503 to get our current E steps, we want to go ahead and remove the Bowden coupler and the Bowden tube from the printer. That's right here. So we're just going to grab the wrench that uh, came with the kit. And we're just going to go ahead and remove the Bowden coupler now. And once you get it unscrewed, you should be able just to let it hang right here and you're good to go. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and push the filament in through the extruder. And we're going to use our flush cut cutters and cut it right here on the face. So I pushed the filament through. It's through the gear and the pulley right here. And then use your flush cut cutters that came with the kit and cut it right there on the face of the extruder. Okay, so when you're done cutting that, go back to the main page in Octoprint and click this tab to get there. Then go ahead and heat up your hot end. I'm gonna use 200 degrees Celsius, and you can see mine is already on its way for heating up. And we're almost there. Once you get that far, go back into this tab of Octoprint, and I like to check these two boxes here to suppress all the other messages that come through. Uh, just so we can see what we want to see. And we're going to type in G1, E100, F100. And what that's going to do is extrude 100 millimeters of filament through the hot end, uh, in, our, in our case, through the extruder, because we're using the free air method. So go ahead and hit enter on that, and you'll say it says received OK, and then you'll see it start to extrude out of the extruder. So this is just a quick video to show you it extruding. It will take about a minute when you do it this way. So just be patient, it will get through it all. But uh, once you do that code, it should look just like this and the filament should be coming out of the extruder. All right, so after you're done extruding, go ahead and flush cut it and then go ahead and measure the piece that you cut. In my case, I did it three times just to triple check myself. Each time I got uh, 93, as you can see right there. So go ahead and do this. You don't have to do it three times. I just did for the heck of it for video sake. But after you measure it, you're on to the next step. So the next thing we want to do is save our new E-steps in Octoprint. So we're going to type M90E100, hit enter, and that will enter it into the EEPROM, and then type M500, and that will save it. Then if we can type m 503 go back and look at the e steps and we should be at 100 now which we are and we're good to go okay to double check everything we'll make sure that the hot end is still heated up and we're going to go ahead and put the same code in that we used earlier and i'll link that below and we're going to go ahead and run that and make sure we get 100 millimeters of filament out of the extruder so run it, there you go. And at this time you should be extruding. What you wanna do from here is cut the length when it's done and make sure you're at 100 millimeters. So once it's done extruding, you wanna do your flush cut on the end like we did before. Measure it and you should get 100 millimeters like this. The next thing you wanna do is go ahead and install your Bowden coupler and the tube back on the extruder and preheat your printer for a PLA print. The next thing we are going to do is print a test cube. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and print this test cube. It is linked in the description below. 
Then when the test cube is complete, we're gonna go ahead and take our caliper and we're gonna measure two points from each side of the cube here. So we're gonna to start to make sure it's zeroed and then we're gonna go ahead and measure two points from each of the four walls. So there'd be a first point like that and then go to the next point and you can do that. You're gonna do that for all four walls and record all of the measurements on a piece of paper. So now we got all of our eight measurements and we listed them here and added that up and we get uh, 3.03. .03. Then we're gonna get the average of that. So we take our 3.03 .03 divided by eight because that's the total amount of measurements we got and we end up with 0.37875. So now that we've added that all and got our average, which is 0.37875, we need to come up with another number. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 0.4, which is the original size of each wall, what it should have been, divide that by the 3.78 that we got with our average, and we equal 1.05. All right, so now that we got that, we know that our answer was 1.05 and we're going to take that times 100 and that's sh the total steps we should have had. So that e gives us an answer of 105. So we take our 1.05 times 100. That gives us 105, excuse me. And 105 is our new flow rate or extrusion multiplier, depending on what slicer you're using. Okay, so now we have the new extrusion multiplier or flow rate and we need to know what to do with that. So we go into Kira under the material tab and find the flow line and we change this to 105. Or if you don't know where that is, you can always search. Just type in flow up here in the search bar and it's going to bring up everything that has the word flow in it. In our case, we want to go under material and flow and change this to 105. Now your flow, flow rate is set and you can slice and start printing with your new flow rate and your new e-steps. So there you have it. You've officially updated the e-steps using OctoPrint or any other software that allows you to connect to the printer. I hope you have a great day and keep printing. Please like the video, click subscribe if you want to see more and click on the little bell if you want to be notified when the next great videos come out.